Hello children, hope you are all doing well. In the last class, we have studied the importance or the role of microbes in household products. We have studied the household products like curd, cheese and toddy and dough and also the industrial products like alcoholic beverages, antibiotics, enzymes, acids and uh, we also studied about the bioactive molecules. This microbes also helpful in sewage treatment. This is what we have studied in the last class. Today in this class we are going to study about microbes in biogas production, microbes as biocontrol agent and microbes as biofertilizer. So, we will start with microbes as uh, microbes in biogas production. Before entering into this topic, let us talk about biogas. So, what is this biogas? So, this biogas it, it is an excellent fuel. Why it is said to be an excellent fuel? Because it is very cheap and pollution free and it is renewable. Next, it is a mixture of gases, it is a mixture of gases. So, what are the gases present in this biogas? Methane and carbon dioxide and hydrogen. These are the gases which is present in the biogas. This biogas is produced by a group of bacteria known as methanogens. Methanogens. Okay. This methanogens are anaerobic bacteria. Anaerobic means they do not require oxygen for respiration. They will uh, grow in a anaerobic condition. So, this methanogenic bacteria. So, this methanogens grow on a cellulosic material and break or digest the cellulosic material to release this gases that is methane, carbon dioxide and hydrogen. Now, this uh, biogas is also known as gober gas. It is also known as gober gas. What is gober? Gober means the cow dung. Why it is called gober gas? Now, cattle's main fodder is plant products. The plant cell wall, the cell wall uh, of this plant is made up of cellulose. Okay. So, in the rumen of the cattle, this methanogen bacteria are present. So, here in the rumen, what happened? They break down the cellulosic component and increases the nutrition of the cattle. So, in the cow dung, this methanogens are present. This cow dung is used in biogas plant for the production of biogas. As the cow dung are used in the biogas plant for the production of biogas, it is commonly known as gober gas. Now, next is they are renewable. They are renewable sources of energy sources of energy. What do you mean by renewable? They can be recycled. Okay. Now, let us see uh, that here you can see cow dung. Okay. Cow dung is used where? Cow dung is used in biogas plant. Here it produces biogas, that biogas is used for cooking purposes and it is also used for lighting purposes. Okay. Now, this biogas, after the production of the biogas, the spent slurry is used in the soil to increase the fertility of the soil. So, this slurry which is obtained from the biogas is used as a fertilizer. Okay. 
So, plant absorbs this nutrient from the soil and they are getting the nutrient from the soil and this plant is again consumed by cows. This is consumed by cow. Okay. This cow, cow dungs are obtained and again it is used. Nothing is wasted in this cycling process. Okay. That is said to be, that is, no, that is why it is said to be a renewable sources of energy. Now, as I told you, it's, it is an excellent fuel. It do not produce any smoke during burning and they do not produce any residues. Okay. So, it is pollution free and it gives high uh, heat, heating capacity. So, it is an excellent fuel. Now, we will see the biogas plant. So, this is the biogas plant. Now, first we will see the construction of this plant. This tank is made up of concrete. You can see here, this is the first tank that is the mixing tank and this is the digester. It is completely sealed one and there is a gas holder just placed above the digester and there is another tank, outlet tank. Now, we will see the uh, working of this biogas plant. Now, you see here, this is a mixing tank where the bio waste, cow dung and waters are mixed over here. And, uh, and after that, it is allowed to pass through this pipe into the digester. Digester is a place where methanogens are present. As I told you, it is completely sealed uh, chamber and there is no oxygen available in this chamber. As you know, this methanogens do not require oxygen, they are anaerobic bacteria. Here the actual process of digestion of the bio waste takes place. Okay. After the digestion what happens? The gases are formed which is collected in the gas holder. What are the gases? It is a mixture of gases containing methane, carbon dioxide and hydrogen. The percentage of the methane is about 65 percent, it is near about 65 percent and uh, carbon dioxide is about 35 percent, the remaining is other gases. Okay. Now, there is an outlet is present just above the gas holder that is used to supply this gases, uh, gas in the nearby houses. Now, actually this gas is used for cooking and lighting purposes. Now, the waste or the used slurry or the sludge is collected in this tank and this is rich in manure. So, it is used uh, to uh, increase the fertility of the soil. Okay. So, this is about the working of this uh, biogas plant. Let us see once again. So, there is a tank which is known as mixing tank where cow dung, bio waste and water is mixed and this is allowed to pass into the digester tank where methanogen bacteria are present as it, uh, it is completely sealed chamber and methanogen bacteria digest the bio waste and produces a mixture of gases which is collected over a uh, uh, gas holder that is the gas holder is placed just above the digester. Okay. And from there, the gas is supplied to nearby houses for lighting and cooking purposes, it is utilized. Now, the used uh, products or we can call it as a sludge is collected in a outlet tank and it is used to increase the fertility of the soil. So, this is about biogas plant. Next, we will study microbes as biocontrol agent. Now, we will study the microbes as biocontrol agent. Before entering into this topic, let us study about biocontrol agent. We will see what is a biocontrol agent. Bio means life. Actually, it is a biological method to control pests and insects. Large number of plants are killed by this pest and insects. So, there is a great loss of, a huge loss of uh, yield. In order to overcome this uh, loss, most of the farmers, they, utilize, they use insecticides and pesticides to control this pest and insect. 
But this insecticides and pesticides since it is a chemical product it will uh, have a negative impact on the environment. So, it, it is having disadvantages. So, let us see what are the disadvantages of this insecticides and pesticides. The first thing is toxic to all life forms. Obviously, it kills insects and pests, but it is toxic to the plant on which it is applied. And it is a toxic for animals or other organism which consumes this plant. Second is cause imbalance in ecosystem. It not only kills pests and insects, but also kills other organism which do not cause any harm to the plant. It disturbs the food chain and imbalances the ecosystem. Third, it causes soil and water pollution. Excessive use of this insecticide and pesticide pollute the soil. Due to the excessive irrigation, the chemical which is in the soil are washed into the water bodies causing water pollution. Next is killing the pest can create problems for those organisms which depend on them for food. Suppose some insects or pest, uh, it is a food for some other birds. Okay. If this insects are and pest are completely eradicated, what will happen? That will affect the birds which depend on them for food. So, these are the disadvantages of in insecticides and pesticides. In order to overcome this disadvantages of insecticide and pesticide, this organic farmers adopted biocontrol agent. This biocontrol agent are living organisms which act as a natural enemies of the pest and insects. Okay. This uh, biocontrol agent, they kill the pest and insects, they, but th they do not damage other organisms. Uh, which is present in the atmosphere or in the ecosystem and it do not damage the plant. Okay. This uh, natural enemies or this biocontrol agent, they do not completely eradicate the pest. Pest is also an important part in the ecosystem. So, they keep this pest in a manageable level, okay. so that the, uh, there should be a proper uh, balance in the ecosystem. Actually, biodiversity is very essential for a vibrant ecosystem. Okay. Now, let us see how this natural enemies works or how the biocontrol agents works. It act as either as a predator, it act either as a predator for insects and pests or it act as a pathogen. So, first we will see how it act as a predator. So, first one is ladybird beetle. It attacks or kills aphids, aphids are its prey. Now, dragonfly, dragonfly kills mosquitoes. They not only uh, uh, consumes uh, adult mosquito, they also consumes the larvae of the mosquito. So, if you release dragonfly in the area, uh, there will be a reduction in the uh, mosquitoes. Next is centipedes, spider, frog and lizard, they also consumes insects, harmful insects, which is a pest. Now, cat, cat also play an important role to reduce the number of mice, mice that damages the yield. Okay. So, in this way, we can control insects and pests. Okay. This is, this method is known as, that is predators, it act as a, this biocontrol agent act as a predators. Now, next is the biocontrol ag agents acts uh, as a pathogens. What is pathogen which cause diseases? That means, this biocontrol agents cause diseases to insects and pests. Now, we will see one by one. The first pathogen is bacteria. This particular bacteria which is called Bacillus thuringiensis, which is commonly known as Bt. It is commonly known as Bt. This bacillus thuringiensis, it is available in sachet form in a dry spore uh, form. 
So, this uh, is dissolved in a water and it is sprayed on the vulnerable plants like fruit trees and brassica plants. So, when this insect's larvae feed on that plant, so what happens? This bacteria enters into its body and after reaching in the gut, it releases its toxic. Okay, that will kill the insect's larvae. Okay, now what happened? We will study in detail about this bacillus therogenesis in the biotechnology and its application. Now, you just try to understand how this pathogen controls the insect's larvae. How it controls the insect's larvae? When this insect's larvae take or feed on this um, bacillus therogenesis, which is sprayed on the vulnerable plant, what happened? It enter into the body of the insect's larvae where it releases its toxic effect uh, in the gut of the insect larvae and kills this insect's larvae. The next is viruses. There is a group of virus which is known as baculovirus. So, this baculovirus also act as a biocontrol agent. So, this group of virus which is acting as a biocontrol agent comes under a genus nucleopolyhydrovirus. It attacks arthropods and they are species specific, they particularly attack that particular types of species, do not damage any other organisms. Now, what are arthropods? Arthropod is a phylum where insect groups you can see. Okay. Now, next is fungi. So, that fungi, uh, a particular fungi called trichoderma which is found in the root ecosystem. It will, pr it protects the plant from pathogenic, uh, from various types of pathogen. So, this is how this uh, biocontrol agent protects the plant from uh, insects and pests. Now, you have seen varieties of things that is whether it is a predator or it is a pathogen like bacteria, virus or fungi or here you can see the ladybird, dragonfly, centipede, spider, frog, lizard, uh, cat and all. They particularly attacks any uh, particular pest, okay. They never damage any other organisms, okay. So, in this way we can balance the ecosystem, okay. So, this is an important method to control the pest and insects. Is it clear children? Next we will study bio uh, that is microbes as bio fertilizers. Now here we will study about microbes as bio fertilizers. Now you see children, first we will try to understand what is fertilizers. What are fertilizers? This fertilizers uh, are the substance which is added into the soil to uh, enrich the fertility of the soil. These fertilizers are substances which added into the soil to enrich the fertility of the soil. Okay. Now, they are of uh, can divide basically they are of two type that is chemical fertilizer and bio fertilizers, chemical fertilizer and bio fertilizers. Now, this chemical fertilizers actually after green revolution farmers adapt, adopted chemical fertilizer in order to increase the yield. But this is a chemical thing, chemical, so it is having some disadvantages. So let us see the disadvantages of this chemicals in the ecosystem. Now the first is toxic to many other life forms as we have already studied in insecticides and pesticide. Next cause imbalance in soil pH. Excessive use of this uh, fertilizer imbalances the soil pH that is it may either become too much acidic or too much alkaline. So, that result in soil infertility and it degrade the ecosystem. And again the excessive use of this fertilizer, the plant becomes susceptible to many diseases and fruits and vegetable have high toxic residues. If organism or uh, if human being consumes this fruit and vegetable, 
deadly diseases may cause okay and it also causes environmental uh, pollution like soil pollution and water pollution so they these are the disadvantages of chemical fertilizers so to overcome this disadvantages on chemical fertilizers bio fertilizers are used this bio means living organisms that means living organisms are used to enrich the soil that is known as the bio fertilizers now here you can see the living organisms uh, are bacteria fungi and cyanobacteria actually plant require a large amount of nitrogen this nitrogen is present in the atmosphere plant cannot absorbs nitrogen from the atmosphere this atmospheric nitrogen has to be fixed bacteria and cyanobacteria are these two organism they fixes the atmospheric nitrogen okay and it provides to the plant now we'll see the bacteria here you can see bacteria can be divided into two that is free living bacteria are there okay they lives in the soil and fixes atmospheric nitrogen and enrich the soil nutrient examples of free living bacteria are azospirillum and azotobacter next is symbiotic association what do you mean by symbiotic association it is a mutual relationship between two organism that means two organism live together both are benefited by this association you have studied in your lower classes about uh, rhizobium and root nodules of leguminous plant association so uh, you can see that suppose this is the root okay and in the root you can see root nodules okay these are the root nodules which is present in leguminous plant what is a leguminous plant all the pulses comes under leguminous plant here in this root nodules uh, if you remember st uh, students you have studied the formation of root nodules in class 11th okay in this root nodules what happen this rhizobium bacteria leaves and after that this rhizobium bacteria fixes the atmospheric nitrogen so this nitrogen they provide to the plant and from the plant rhizobium bacteria gets a shelter as well as the nutrition so this is known as the symbiotic association now this is about bacteria next next is fungi there is a fungus which is known as glumus it act as a mycorrhiza what is mycorrhiza it is a symbiotic association of uh, fungal uh, with the roots of the higher plant it is a symbiotic association of fungal hyphae with the roots of uh, higher plants now here by this association what happen it absorbs phosphorus from the soil okay so it absorbs phosphorus from the soil and it supply to the plant and it give resistance to root borne pathogens okay plants get resistance due to the presence of this glumus uh, with the uh, root borne pathogens and it helps in uh, to tolerate the salinity and drought okay so these are the benefits Pla higher plants get uh, from the fungal association and fungus drives nutrition from the higher plant okay next is cyanobacteria cyanobacteria is comes under uh, kingdom monera okay it is a, a prokaryotic bacteria it is also known as blue green algae they are autotrophs that means they can synthesize its own food okay now they can also fix atmospheric nitrogen so their examples are anabena no stock and oxaliteria they fixes atmospheric nitrogen and also increases the organic matter of the soil so these are the uh, way by which bio fertilizers are used to enrich the soil uh, uh, nutrient now what we have studied in the entire portion many microbes are used in various uh, various 
products. Now, first of all, we have studied about biogas. Which microbe is used? Methanogens are used. Okay. Now, after that, we, what we have studied? Biocontrol agent. Biocontrol agents, certain living organisms which are used as a predators like ladybirds, dragonfly, centipedes, lizards, spider, cat. These are all used to control the pest and insects. And again, uh, um, this pathogens that is biocontrol act as a pathogen to uh, control the pest and insects. So, it will attack the pest and insects and control uh, their growth. The examples are bacteria, uh, the example of the bacteria is Bacillus thuringiensis, which is commonly known as Bt. Uh, and again fungus Trichoderma which lives in the uh, root ecosystem. And third is the virus that is baculovirus which attacks arthropods. Okay. Next what we have studied biofertilizers. Again here some bacteria are involved like azospirillum and azotobacter which freely leaves in the soil and fixes the atmospheric nitrogen. Next uh, we have seen a symbiotic association. What is symbiotic association? That is, it is a mutual relationship between two living organisms, both are benefited. Okay, we have seen here the rhizobium leaves at the roots of leguminous plants. By living there, they fixes the atmospheric nitrogen. Okay, so, both are benefited by this association. Rhizobium fixes atmospheric nitrogen and it is uh, supplied to plant and this the rhizobium drives nutrition from, from the plant. Okay. Next what we have studied fungus, fungus is also acting as a micro uh, that is mycorrhiza it is a symbiotic association and it is found in the roots of the higher plant. It absorbs phosphorus, it gives tolerance to salinity and drought and it, is, it gives resistance to um, this root borne pathogens. Again cyanobacteria. Cyanobacteria also fixes atmospheric nitrogen um, and uh, it enriches the soil. Examples are anabina, no stalk and oxaliteria. So children what we have studied the use of microbes in human welfare. Okay. We have seen varieties of microbes which is utilized for human welfare. So in the previous chapter what we have studied the microbes are harmful for human uh, beings. They causes various types of diseases. But here in this chapter, we focused on the beneficial sites of the microbes. So you have seen there are so many microbes which is uh, very essential for human welfare. Hope you might have understood this topic very nicely. We will meet in other topic. Until then, take care, good luck, thank you.